This is the Louis T. Network. The journey is long, and nobody said it was going to be easy. But all we've got is us. All that believe is us. Red Skins Report. Welcome, all my fellow Red Skin brethren. And sister, I am your man and resident Redskins fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Redskins Report. So, like I said before, a lot is starting to transpire as we are now in training camp. And I talked about this on the guide to training camp that there was a potential possibility that the Redskins could sign one Junior Jovace Gillette. Now, I said that I didn't think it would happen, first and foremost, so uh, I was wrong on that front, but I did tell you that there was a possibility that if you said all the right things, and if, and this was the key for me, and I said this in the video, this was the key for me, if Scotty Mack the mickey, the mickey, the mickey, the mickey, the mad daddy. If Scotty Mack bought what he was selling and he had to do a hell of a job, Scotty Mack sat down with a lot of players, okay? A lot of guys, a lot of different people around league circles. He's talked to many, as you saw in the press conference, and he was very agitated at all the questions, as he should be. That was his introduction to the Washington media. They do a really good job of stirring a pot in Washington, so you've got to have thick skin. They're going to ask you a lot of uh, questions that are non-football related because that's the culture around here, and it's been that way for quite a while now. So I thought he handled himself well in that press conference, and that's why I wanted to wait. Yeah, I didn't want to jump out and release a video and have more facts come out. I wanted to wait until everything was laid in front of us, but I had, I had already said this, and I was right about this, that and Scott McLuhan even said the same thing, that he was going to get work regardless, whether it was us or somebody else. He was going to get work in the league. So the question then became, why us? Why the Redskins? Why did he decide to visit us? The, the Cowboys were interested. There were other teams in the league that wanted this guy and at least wanted to sit down and talk to him. Why did he come here first? And that's the question you got to ask yourself is, why the Redskins? Why now? And I think it had, a lot of it had to do with Scotty Mack and, and sitting down with him and saying, look, I've been in your position before, okay? I've, I've had opportunities taken off the table because of my actions outside of work. I've had that happen to me before. But what you have to do is make sure you don't make the same mistake. They sat down and had the man-to-man, -man, heart to heart talk, okay? And Scotty Mack said that Junior Gervais Galette was crying, he was sweating, he really wanted to be a Redskin. And it, from all accounts, it sounds like he really wants to be here. And at the end of the day, we know about what he does on the field. His exploits have already been noted on the field. 22 sacks over the last two seasons. You're talking about an average of 11 sacks per over the last two seasons. He's only 27 years old. You know one thing in this league that there is a premium of. You don't have a lot of these guys, guys that can get to the quarterback. Of all the positions in the National Football League, especially on the defensive side of the football, you can find yourself a corner, okay? Now, he may not be very good, but you can find yourself a corner, all right? You can find yourself a defensive tackle, okay? You can find yourself an inside linebacker. Try finding a guy that can get to the passer consistently. Try finding one of those. They're hard to come by. That's why they make so much money in this league because it's a premium position and you gotta pay top dollar to keep your stuff in-house. So this is a guy that just got a contract from the uh, New Orleans Saints 
just a season ago. They're still paying him money, which is why he was able to come into Washington and take a league minimum, a veteran minimum contract to play football. It does two things for him. One, it gives him a chance to put more film on tape. And two, it's a one-year deal, so if he goes out, balls out, and stays out of trouble, which is the most important part of this equation, he'll be able to make himself more money once again next year in free agency. So it's a good situation for him, but it's an even better situation for the Redskins as it's a one-year deal, no guaranteed money involved other than the, the actual veteran minimum that he will be receiving. And again, if there's any transgressions that take place off the field, you cut them loose, you cut ties, and you don't even bat an eye, and there is no residual effect from it. So it's a good contract from the Redskins standpoint, and if this guy is legit, and he comes out and he balls out, guess what? We'll have first crack at him next year. So there, it's a situation where we win, he wins, the league is going to step in at some point. I believe he will see a suspension, and the Redskins know about this. They know that, but that's why you have depth, okay? You go out and get this guy. You still got Trent Murphy. You still got the, the young fellow we just drafted in the second round, Preston Smith out of Mississippi State. You have depth out there. There are so many players that we have on this roster that are going to be able to play at the outside linebacker position that we're not hurting at this guy. Remember, we were, we were fully expecting to do without Junior Gervais Collette, okay? This wasn't a situation where we were relying on his production. This isn't a Brian Arapo situation where you're relying on a guy's uh, production and not getting it. This was something extra that we're getting on the side. If he plays, if he's not suspended, great. If he does get suspended, we'll be able to make do without him. So it's a win-win for everybody involved. I think a lot of people were all put by the, the transgressions. And again, uh, Scotty Mack said it himself. He wasn't happy with what he saw or take. Nobody could be happy with what they saw uh, with that video that's floating around online. And I made a mistake and let me correct it now. He wasn't, he wasn't cited for DUI. He wasn't pulled over and, and, and hemmed up for DUI. It, it was a, a, a number of misdemeanors. I believe it was three separate misdemeanors. Uh, the biggest being expired tag. So, I mean, again, when you're supposed to be low key and not doing anything to worsen your situation, you can't have expired tags. Something really minuscule like that, you get pulled over for it. It just heightens the amount of annoyance on the part of the Saints to the point where they just said, this kid doesn't get it. Let's just go ahead and part ways with him. We're doing something different in our locker room right now, and he's not a part of where we're going. Let's go ahead and part ways with him. So Redskins have done their homework. Scotty Mack has done his homework. They know what they're getting themselves into. And again, he said it himself, I'm not going to jeopardize what I'm building here in Washington. We're building something good here and I'm just getting here. I can't afford to bring a bad apple and potentially spoil the bunch. And so I'm not gonna bring a bad guy into this locker room. I've sat down with many a player in my day and I understand where this guy's coming from. I understand that he's not a bad kid, okay? He just made a mistake or two, but he cannot continue down that path. And he knows he's gotta walk a straight man a lot. It's got to be a straight nail. If it's not, he's gone. And he sat down and told him this, and Junior Gervais Gallette wanted to be a Washington Redskins. So, you know what? I will, I will say this. It feels good to want other players to want to come here. That's what you get when you have a credible general manager with clout that has a reputation around the league of being one of the best you get things like this to happen for you. You get opportunities that wouldn't normally afford themselves to you. We're in a really good spot. And just listening to Scotty Mack talk about where this direction of this team is going and how everything has unfolded in this offseason, you, you can't be anything but pleased with the direction of this team. And you can't feel anything but full-blown confidence in what Scott McLuhan has done thus far. And when he tells you that this kid is good, even if you don't believe it, Scotty Mack makes you feel like this is a good kid and he puts you at ease to a certain extent. I think we're in a really good spot right now. So the signing, if you want my opinion on it, it's a good signing because 
do I like what he brings off the field? No. And I think, again, I'm not one to just tell someone you can't have another shot because you made a mistake. People make mistakes all the time. Nobody's perfect, okay? No one is perfect. People make mistakes. The question is, do you learn from your mistakes? This is a, a situation where there isn't any recidivism, okay? If you make another mistake, you gotta go. Much faster than slow. And so, if he comes in, model citizen, plays on the field, great teammate, great guy in the locker room, we won't be having this discussion in six months. We'll be asking, can we resign this guy? If he goes out and he makes a mistake off the field and he doesn't get it, sign off. So I'm, I'm on board with the signing. Anytime you can get a guy that helps your football team, you gotta realize that's what the good teams do. I told you about the Seahawks and Frank Clark. Nobody's beating them up anymore, you know why? It's old news, it's old hat. Unless Frank Clark goes out and proves the Seahawks wrong and, and does something that he has no business doing off the field and makes them look bad as an organization, nobody will be talking about Frank Clark's transgression if he's getting it done on the field. They'll start to bring up some things you know, about his past down the road if he's played some good football, but it'll be a redemption story then instead of him being targeted as a guy that can't get it done off the field and has a checkered past. So it's all, every, look, America loves the redemption story. They always, they love the redemption story. And we got a chance to write a new chapter in the Junior Gervais Galette book. Let's hope that we make beautiful music together. If he can get pressure on one side and we got Kerrigan doing his thing on the other, this could be one heck of a tandem in Washington in the 2015 season. Quick news and notes from camp thus far. We all heard about uh, vitamin B for Shaw Breeland going down. We knew about the suspension. We heard about that. Uh, and, and really, everybody is assuming it's stemming from the citation down in Richmond last year. And if that's the case, that's deplorable because how long ago was that? We're talking about a whole year and now you're finally coming down on this man for that. But whatever the case may be, it's a one game suspension. Uh, he probably won't even be able to play them anyway because that same day he gets injured, freak accident. We dodged a bullet. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be very frank. We dodged a bullet because that was an ugly fall. If you've seen the photographs, it was an ugly scene. Could have been a lot worse. He just has a sprained MCL, gonna miss at least four to six weeks. I'm looking more at eight, eight weeks. Six to eight weeks is the window that I'm, I'm operating under. Uh, but four to six weeks has been reported. I'm thinking more of six to eight if you wanna be on the safe side to allow it to fully heal. And because he's going to miss the first game of the season, because this happened when it did, you're talking about all of the month of August, so that's four weeks there. Two weeks into the season, uh, two weeks into September, that's when the season starts, second week of September, so that's six weeks. He's got to miss the first game anyway. I'm thinking by the end of September, early October, somewhere in that window, is where we'll finally see him. He'll start the season on the pup list. If, if I'm the uh, wet Redskins, I may try to keep him off of the pup list because if he starts the season on the pup list, he's going to have to miss the first six games of the season. And I think he'll be way, way ahead of schedule in terms of being healthy enough to play before that is up. So if I'm the Redskins, you gotta save a rock spot for this kid and, and have him be able to come out and, and play week three maybe is what I'm, I'm aiming at. That's the target date for me. So we'll see some guys heal faster than others. And with modern technology and science, these injuries, they seem to come and go faster than they did in the past. So we'll see what happens. But we dodged a bullet as vitamin B is not lost for the season, which is what a lot of us were fearing when we first heard and saw what the injury looked like. And last little bit of news, Tevin Mitchell, 1L, 1L, did go down with a shoulder injury. So. Justin Rogers is getting a crack at the slot right now. We're getting a little thin at corner already. It's too early in the season for this. So, you know how training camp comes with its bumps and bruises. Matt Jones, who? Matt Jones leaves uh, the practice field with an apparent knee injury. They're going to evaluate him. Seems like he may have sprained something again. I told you this kid came from college with a uh, injury filled and riddled uh, background. So I don't know if it's starting to rear his ugly head already, but again, I talked about him missing a game against LSU with some tendonitis, had to have his knee scope. I, I, no one said tendonitis, I said tendonitis, I said that. But when I hear knee scope and knee drain, I think tendonitis 
We'll see if Matt Jones, who? Matt Jones, is starting to already have issues with the knee. Let's hope he's healthy and ready to rock and roll soon, uh, sooner rather than later. And same with Tevin Mitchell. Let's hope that his shoulder injury isn't significant enough to see him miss a lot of time. When you're a rookie and you're looking to crack the roster, you need to be on the field. And so if you're off, the si off to the side and not getting the reps that you need, you can take all the mental reps you want. You can have all the mental reps you want. If you're not getting the physical reps out on the field, someone else is going to take your spot. So, I am a Redskins fan. Ashton Burgundy and Gold, my Redskins spirit will never die. My Redskins spirit will never fold. Until we meet again, hail to our beloved Redskins. I thank you for joining me on this program. If it happens at Redskins training camp and it's major, then it's going to happen here on this program. And so, I'll see you next time. Can we just talk football? Shall we just talk football? I think we shall talk football now. All the off-season stuff, for the most part, unless it's Alfred Morris AM getting his deal, getting his bread, or Trent Williams getting his money, I don't want to talk about anything else other than football, folks. Let's keep it strictly about football, man. Gosh. See you next time. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. The Red Skins Report.